I think that GD Tech Q1 Pro is one of the best kept secrets within 3D printing. GD Tech have implemented significant improvements in the Q1 Pro when compared to their XMAX 3 3D printer. The Q1 Pro is a lower cost alternative to the Bamboo Lab P1S, producing similar quality 3D prints. Hi, I'm Ken of Wrist Innovations, and today let's go over everything I like and a few things I don't like about the GD Tech Q1 Pro 3D printer. I'll compare the Q1 Pro to Bamboo Labs PS1 printer. I'll cover the printer's key features, setting up the printer, my printer performance, and the pros and cons of this printer. I want to thank GD Tech for sending me the Q1 Pro, so let's get started. First, let's cover the features. Its overall measurements are 477 millimeters by 467 millimeters by 489 millimeters, and it weighs about 17 kilograms. So it's a lot easier to move the printer around compared to the XMAX 3, which weighs about 30 kilograms. The Q1 Pro's build volume is 245 by 245 by 240 millimeters, which is smaller than the Bamboo Labs P1S at 256 cube, and the XMAX 3 at 325 by 325 by 315 millimeters. The Q1 Pro has a steel frame that's enclosed with plastic panels, and it has a clear plastic door and removable top. Just like the XMAX 3, there appears to be a lot of wasted space inside the Q1 Pro, which makes it larger than the Bamboo Lab P1S, but with a smaller print volume. The combination of the clear door and top, along with the LED light bar, make it easy to see inside the Q1 Pro. Speaking of the door, several people have pointed out that there isn't any handle to open the door. Normally, with the handleless door design, a finger pull feature is added to make it easier to open the door. I came up with a simple design that I 3D printed in ABS, and you can see that in the making parts section of this video. The Q1 Pro is a fully enclosed core XY printer using 10mm steel rods. The Q1 Pro has two Z-axis stepper motors with independent drivers, so the software allows for adjustment of each stepper versus the XMAX 3 that had one stepper and a belt. A special feature of the Q1 Pro and the XMAX 3 is that they have an actively heated chamber that can reach 60 degrees centigrade. The Q1 Pro has an AC voltage heater located in the left corner of the printer. Now, there has been some controversy that the AC heater could expose somebody to AC voltage if they were to put a metal object through the heater grill. Allen of Mandic Labs designed a 3D printed cover plate that adds additional protection if you are concerned. Allen's link is in the description below. The GD Tech printers are the only 3D printer family on the market in the sub $1,000 range that has this heated chamber feature. This feature can really reduce warping of parts, especially for engineering materials such as nylon. The QM Pro has a chamber fan, however, they eliminated the charcoal air filter that they have on the XMAX 3. And I really think they should have included an air filter with the Q1. The XMAX 3 has a filament dry box located in the back of the printer to keep moisture sensitive filaments dry. However, they made the dry box optional for the Q1 Pro. There were a lot of complaints regarding the filament holder and the dry box located in the back of the XMAX 3 because it was so hard to reach the back. With the Q1 Pro, they moved the spool holder to the left side of the printer, but the holder is quite flimsy. I have a simple solution to this in my making parts section of this video. If you have a 3D printing need, but you don't have a 3D printer, I have the solution for you. That brings me to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you are working on any prototype projects, they can help you when you need a variety of parts. Besides making PCBs, they also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and lots of different types of 3D printing, including metal printing. This is a special time for PCBWay because they are currently celebrating their 10th anniversary, so they have many different sales going on right now. You just need to go on their website, upload your design, select the material and quantity, and you will get an instant quote. Then they will manufacture the parts and ship them right to your door. Give them a try and I think you will be amazed what they can do for you. I have a link in the description below. 
The Q1 Pro has a maximum hot end temperature of 350 degrees C and a maximum build plate temperature of 120 degrees C. The printer comes pre-installed with a hardened steel nozzle that can be used for abrasive filament. The nozzle options are 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, or 0.8 millimeter diameter. Because it's an enclosed design with the actively heated chamber, it can print not only PLA, PETG, and TPU, but also higher temperature engineering plastics, such as ABS, ASA, and carbon-filled nylon. It has a maximum speed of 600 millimeters per second and a maximum acceleration of 20,000 millimeters per second squared. It is a fast 3D printer and it can produce a bench sheet in approximately 17 minutes. The Q1 Pro has auto bed leveling and Z-axis offset that is accomplished by using three strain gauges underneath the build platform and a proximity sensor located in the print head. It has a filament runout sensor located in the print head and a filament tangle detection feature located inside the top of the printer. The printer also has input shaping. The Q1 Pro uses Clipper firmware with some customization and it comes with 32 gigabyte of eMMC storage. The printer has Wi-Fi so you can print wirelessly or use a USB thumb drive. It is a bit odd that the USB connection is located on the right back top of the printer. The Fluid Web interface can be accessed using a browser as well as the GDTEX Slicer software. With the latest version of firmware, you can update future versions of firmware online, which makes it really simple. GDTEX also offers a mobile app that allows you to track your printer performance remotely. The Q1 Pro comes with an A-graded 1050p camera that allows you to monitor your prints and capture time lapses. The printer comes with a PEI double-sided textured build plate. There is an auxiliary fan located on the right side of the printer that really helps with parts cooling. The Q1 Pro has another new feature, which is a nozzle wiper and purge bucket that the X-Max 3 doesn't have. The nozzle wiper extends out when the print head comes into contact with the wiper assembly. It seems a bit flimsy, but so far it has done a good job in keeping the nozzle clean. The purge bucket captures the filament waste and the bucket is easily removed when it gets full. The Q1 Pro has a nice 4-inch LCD touchscreen which runs its own firmware. At the making of this video, July 2024, the current pricing of the Q1 Pro is on sale for $449. The Bamboo Lab P1S 3D printer is currently priced at $599, so $150 more. After covering my printing experience of the Q1 Pro, I'll comment on if I think the Q1 Pro is a worthy competitor to the Bamboo Lab P1S. Now let's talk about unboxing and setup. The printer arrived in a well-protected packaging and setup was very easy. The box includes a spool holder, a small sample of filament, power cord, ethernet cable, USB flash drive, and some miscellaneous tools. I removed the miscellaneous foam and packaging. Next, I connected the power cord and turned the power on. I followed the screen prompts, which instructed me to cut and remove the zip ties holding the axes. Then I removed four screws that held the bed in place during shipping. I installed the two pieces of the filament spool holder that allows you to attach the filament spool on the left side of the printer. I placed the filament spool onto the holder and then threaded the filament through the Teflon tubing until it reached the extruder. Then I clicked on the screen to find the load screen. I pressed the hot end temperature icon and set the temperature to match my material. Once the nozzle has reached the correct temperature, choose the amount of millimeters of filament that you want to purge and then push the downward arrow. The extruder will then purge the filament onto the build plate. Repeat this step until you're satisfied that you've purged the nozzle of any of the previous filament. Next, it's time for calibration. From the home screen, click on the settings icon. Then under calibration, press the auto bed leveling button. Once finished, then click input shaping button. Once that's done, it's time to make parts. Going into the files tab, I selected a preloaded file. I had previously loaded Bamboo Labs PLA filament. Of course, my first print needed to be a bench sheet. I selected the file and pushed the print button. And this bench sheet came out really very nice. Next, I printed the preloaded model Castle Coin Catcher in the same Bamboo Lab PLA filament. I was really impressed with the quality of the print. Could barely see any layer line. Then I moved to other prints that required slicing. I printed this pipe wrench and other wrenches, which were created from 3dprintedhardware.com. Link to 3dprintedhardware.com is in the description below. 
I printed the pipe wrench in Bamboo Lab ABS and it came out great. I didn't use the chamber heater and the parts did not show any signs of warping. Then I printed this set of wrenches also in Bamboo Lab ABS and they also came out great. On these parts I set the chamber temperature to 55 degrees C and they did not show any signs of warping. Next, I printed my filament spool bracket out of GD Tech's carbon-filled PA-12 nylon. Since nylon is very sensitive to humidity, I previously dried the filament spool in a dryer for 12 hours. I kept the spool of nylon in the dryer while I was printing my parts. I set the chamber temperature to 60 degrees C and there was absolutely no warping and the part turned out great. Then I decided to print out a set of wrenches in the same PA-12 nylon and they also turned out great with no warping. Stefan of CNC Kitchen recently published an excellent video on the benefits of a heated chamber, especially when printing engineering materials and that link is in the description below. So now let's take a closer look at my two special upgrades. First is the filament spool bracket. I made a simple design by 3D printing a reinforcing plate from carbon filled nylon 12. I drilled some holes in the existing spool holder and then I bolted them together. This saved me time rather than designing a whole new spool holder. Next, a door finger pull. I designed this add-on finger pull that I 3D printed in ABS and I attached it to the door using 3M's BHB pressure sensitive adhesive and it works really quite well. Now, let's compare the GD Tech Q1 Pro and the Bamboo Lab P1S. The P1S has a smaller footprint and a larger print volume and it's a bit lighter so the edge goes to the P1S. The Q1 Pro has an actively heated chamber so that's an advantage for the Q1 Pro. The Q1 Pro also has a slightly higher maximum hot end and build plate temperatures so a slight edge to the Q1 Pro. The P1S has a carbon filter while the Q1 Pro only has a chamber fan so advantage goes to the P1S. The Q1 Pro has an LCD screen versus the digital screen of the P1S so the edge goes to the Q1 Pro. The P1S has an option for a multi-color printing so that's definite benefit benefit for the P1S. The Q1 Pro costs $150 less than the P1S, so the advantage goes to the Q1 Pro. Ultimately, you have to decide which features are important to you so you can make the best decision for your 3D printing needs, but you can't go wrong with either printer. So now let's talk about the pros and cons of the Q1 Pro. First, the pros. The Chidi Tech Q1 Pro is a solidly built fully enclosed 3D printer. The actively heated chamber allows you to 3D print a variety of materials. So not only PLA, PETG, and TPU, but also higher temperature engineering plastics such as ABS, ASA, and carbon filled nylon. The quality of the prints from the Q1 Pro rivals the quality I have experienced using the Bamboo X1 carbon printer, which I consider to be a gold standard of 3D printing. The GE Tech made many improvements in the design of their Q1 Pro when compared to their X-Max 3, including Auto-Z offset, a new nozzle wiper module, filament tangle detection sensor, built-in camera, and online firmware updates. I like the clear plastic door and top panel and LED lights, which make it easy to see inside the printer. The Q1 Pro at $449 is $150 less than the Bamboo Lab P1S, so I consider the Q1 Pro to be a good overall value. Now, the cons. The filament spool holder is quite flimsy, so they really should provide a more robust holder. However, there are numerous improvements that people have designed, including my simple upgrade. The door doesn't have a finger pull to easily open the door. However, I've come up with a simple upgrade. Q1 Pro print volume is a bit smaller than the Bamboo Lab P1S. Overall, I'm very impressed with the quality of the prints I made on the Q1 Pro, including prints made from ABS and nylon. I consider the Q1 Pro to be an excellent 3D printer and I'm glad that I have it in my arsenal. The reasonable price, built-in camera, nozzle wiper, auto bed leveling Z-axis offset, and heated chamber that allows you to print high temperature engineering materials make this a very competitive printer. There are a few areas for improvement such as the spool holder and built-in finger pull in the door, but I consider these minor items. If you are looking for a 3D printer that can produce high quality prints right out of the box, I think the Chidi Tech Q1 Pro could be the best kept secret within the 3D printing universe. If you found this video useful please consider subscribing to my channel. Also let me know in the comments below if you think this printer 
is a strong competitor to the Bamboo Lab printers. I do have an affiliate link in the description below. So in case you decide to buy the Chidi Tech Q1 Pro using the link, I would receive a small commission that would benefit my channel. If you'd like to see my evaluation of the Chidi Tech X-Max 3 printer, that link is here. Thanks for watching. Bye.